had both positive and negative consequences after consuming that productivity content and I would like to start with the negative ones and grounds that toxic relationships with productivity are an important issue right now. Productivity guru. Productivity. Productivity equals productivity apps. How I stay productive. Extremely productive toxic relationships. Also, let's talk about it. Everything started from amazing b-rolls that I observed in that productivity videos. I started to picture productivity like this amazing environment around you and I started to think that if you want to be successful you need to be productive, you need to be productive 24 7 and you need to work like a crazy and you shouldn't have a rest at all. Because of that I started to go through the cycles of productivity burnout, productivity burnout. That's really bad because during the productivity uh, cycle, I worked like a crazy, I felt really productive, I did a lot of important tasks, but because of that toxic relationships, after that period, which lasted typically three, four, or maybe five days, I had the days of burnout. During my productivity cycle, I dictated rules to my body. I said, we need to work right now. We shouldn't sleep for a long time. We shouldn't eat that much food. And then my body thought, okay, Tanya, we've been working like a crazy. So right now I'm dictating you the rules and I ask you to not go out of your bed. So this toxic productivity lifestyle made me to respect myself conditionally so during the days when i did something productively and did a lot of work i respected myself and i thought that tanya you're great but during the days when i felt unproductive when i just uh, had a rest or or was hanging out with my friends i started to blame myself i started to think okay you have wasted your time you're stupid so I started to gain confidence because of that, right? And one person is unconfident, it's so easy for this person to be in a state of burnout or just procrastinate on something, which was my case. And by the way, being an artist and content creator, so being a creative soul like me, I couldn't give a vent to my creativity and inspiration. But being under the productivity rules, is I couldn't just change the tasks, I couldn't change my activities because I thought that I'm, I'm a crazy productive person, so that I need to do something that I planned. Creativity or inspiration, this is something that, that appears unconditionally, right? And you cannot regulate when it will appear. So I was used to do my creative projects when I felt really um, uninspired and I did my... Um, tasks like homework or studying when I felt inspired. So I just lost my creativity and inspiration because of that stupid productive decision that I created for myself. Accordingly, another negative impact that I got is that I stopped enjoying the process of doing something. I started to treat each and every activity as a work that should be done productively and you know what it's easy to explain it using an example i started to create my first youtube videos at the age of 12 and i remember that this little girl enjoyed making videos and i loved that process and i loved to be in the state to be in front of the camera and talking about something but after i started to consume the productivity content i started to treat my video making activity as a work that should be done productively I automatically stopped enjoying it and you know this is really hard because since like I love making videos I enjoy it this is my passion but when I started to treat it as a work and I started to observe it from productivity perspective I didn't enjoy it anymore but again it's important to understand that I'm not saying that productivity content is bad and each human just got that negative impact that I got I'm saying that this is what I did, this is mistakes that I did, and please try to use this video as someone's mistakes, as someone's experience, so that you will not repeat the same mistakes in the future. Okay, that was probably everything about negative impacts because of my wrong perspective of proactivity. Um, so right now I'd like to share with you some positive uh, sides of that proactivity content because to be honest, I gained a lot of um, beneficial things for me thanks to that productivity content. 
So the first thing that turned out really beneficial for me is managing my time. Before I started to read books about reactivity and watch YouTube videos about reactivity, I didn't manage my time at all. Like I had only one timetable at school and that's it. But I understood that having been able to manage your own time, you can get great results, especially when you are when you want to develop certain skills and ho different habits. But again, I want you to remember that you should be really realistic about how much time you need to devote for specific things because you can easily turn this useful uh, advice into something unuseful, unfortunately. So don't create the list of 100 tasks per day. It's cool to have at least three tasks per day. Like remember I talked about frogs the ugliest frogs for the breakfast, less ugly frog for the lunch, and the least ugly frog for the evening. The next important thing I realized is the importance of habits and your own environment. So basically, while you have certain habits, you don't have a choice to delegate some tasks because if you have a habit of morning workout, you're not waking up and think whether I should do my workout or not. You just start doing that because this is your habit. You do it automatically. And that's really cool. You can easily improve some areas of your life thanks to the habits. And environment plays a key role in that. As we know from the book Atomic Habits, environment can whether help you to develop certain habits and help you to dispose of certain habits. So basically by changing the position of your furniture in your uh, apartment, you can easily change your habits. And that's really interesting because I remember that when I uh, there is a whole science behind it and I remember that when I tried to dispose of the habit of playing, um, not playing, watching YouTube videos at my desk, I just changed my um, sitting position at the desk and in that new position I didn't allow myself to watch videos so that I could easily develop this studying habit and yeah that's pretty cool so there is a whole science behind it and you can watch a lot of videos in youtube about that science of habit you can read this amazing book atomic habits i really recommend you to read it another beneficial thing that i discovered this is batching so basically when you group uh different things together and do them one by one and they are done successfully while they are combined so for example if you're talking about uh video making and it's far easier for me to create the video scripts ahead for a month or a week, it depends actually. So instead of creating the plot for the video, like creating the video, posting it, and then creating another script in another video and posting it, I have one specific day in a week that I devote for video scripts uh, creating. Or for example, cleaning my room and cleaning uh, my devices. Uh, I can easily combine these two activities together in order to have a specific day where I spend most of my time in order to clean everything around me. So yeah, that works for me. It works differently for different people. Uh, you should understand what works for you and use it in order to be a little bit more effective. The less important thing that I realized is that it's important to have priorities, to have your goals, and I implemented that new knowledge uh, at school so that I study around 18 subjects at school and you know it's so hard to kind of maintain studying all of them and having deep knowledge from each of them, right? So I started to prioritize subjects that I'm interested in, started to get deeper knowledge in that subject. Okay, there is one thing that I like to mention at the end of this video. Try to reduce your time between knowing and doing. This is uh, the phrase that I um, found a couple of days ago. And I realized the importance of that phrase because quite frequently we know something but we don't do that so there is no value in this knowledge till we start practicing it, right? So um, this is something that I try to kind of use in my life and I really try to do the same. Okay guys, that was everything for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that this video somehow uh, inspired you to think about proactivity from another perspective and maybe this video helped you to understand some bad behavioral patterns that you need to delete from your life. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye-bye!